Hey guys, Kruv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to try to rescue a poorly calibrated image with the background extraction tool that is free called Graxpert. So Graxpert is a relative newcomer to the hobby and it's been kind of taking the amateur astrophotography world uh, by storm and I've been ignoring it up to now because up to now my experience with uh, dynamic background extraction and automatic background extraction and pixel insights was perfectly uh, decent and I didn't really have any issues that required more processing to get rid of uh, despite having crazy gradients here in Tokyo. But now I have a very interesting scenario where I have an image of the crescent and tunit nebulae that I have poor flat frames for. I'm going to retake those flat frames and hope for a better result but my calibration is poor and so I have like with my hyperstar setup some really weird patterns to take care of and I'm not quite able to take care of them with dynamic background extraction. So let me show you what I'm talking about on this image here. This is the image without any processing done and I'm just going to quickly do first an automatic background extraction so you can get a good idea of how poor my calibration is. So I'm just going to quickly do that without really thinking too much about it. And we're going to look at the uh, stretch. And you can see we have a definite kind of like lens effect with vignetting in the corners. And we have this very bright area here in the center. My normal strategy for that would be to remove the star using something like Star Exterminator. So I would go in here, use Star Exterminator. If you don't have Star Exterminator, you can use Starnet++ and just remove the stars from the image and then apply a dynamic background extraction. And here we have the stars removed and it's even more visible how crazy this gradient is. And so I could be using dynamic background extraction. And I think one of the best ways to actually do this dynamic background extraction would be to use like symmetries and that kind of stuff. But this is, this is something that is complex to use and that I personally don't master at all yet. And this image is all the more difficult that there's a lot of nebulosity all over the place and so it's choosing sample points that kind of avoid the nebulosity is really hard. And actually I want to try out in Graxpert, like what if I do just like a grid of points without caring about nebulosity, how well it is going to perform. But anyway, here I have manually chosen my points and it's very difficult to actually even see if where the nebulosity is in the much brighter areas at the center and the vignetting there on the reverse vignetting. Uh, but here I am and I can try to do a quick uh, image, maybe here as well, there, a, a quick image correction to see how well we can get rid of that gradient. So let's redo uh, a stretch and you can see like the gradient is still there. We still have like the very bright center. We have some of the very bright corners. I have some crop artifacts, but that's something else. Even though we see the nebulosity quite well, there are limitations here. Okay, so in contrast, what can Graxpert accomplish? I am on Graxpert. Graxpert's website. I'll put the link, of course, in the description. And I've downloaded and installed the version for Windows, although apparently it's available for Mac and Linux as well, which is good. And by the way, it also seems to be open source. There is a rep repository on GitHub for Graxpert. So this is really, really good. I like when things are open source. So let's launch it. And interestingly, it's a portable application. It is doesn't require any install, at least not for me. I just needed to double click on the executable under Windows and it just launched the application. So no installation required. I'm going to use like the default workflow. We can see we have some nice steps on the left hand side. We should lo load the image first. And uh, can it, oh, it can actually load XISF files from PixInsight as well as TIFF files and other formats. And here is the image that we get once it's open. With the image loaded, we can do step two, change the stretch options as needed to have more or less of an aggressive stretch. We can also increase the saturation to try and see like the nebulosity features a bit more than without saturation. Uh, so let's go back to the default, which uh, was 30% uh, with two sigma and a bit more saturation. And that does help me to see where 
the nebulosity is located. Now uh, we can go to three sample selection and we can see that we could just create a grid of points using just the create grid uh, option uh, which would then like do similar like the, the dynamic background extraction uh, set of, uh, of points except it doesn't select anything in the center and obviously it will be selecting a lot of nebulosity which may not be what we want to be doing actually we definitely don't want to be doing that uh, but you know what let's let's try it like that let's try with the uh, the default options I'm gonna also keep flooded generation uh, checked so that once I click here it will actually select other points that look similar uh, to this one to just automatically add them so that's what's happening when I'm doing that now I have like a full grid on top of the uh, of the image I can choose the default interpolation method of Krieging, I guess, and try to calculate the background, see what happens. Okay, and here we have the result. That took quite a bit of time and, you know, I just kept the defaults just to see what would happen if, uh, if someone just, like, did it on its own. And... Yeah, it looks like it took care of the background, but... I think it removed a lot of details from the image as well. Like oh, here there's a lot of nebulosity that's supposed to be there, it's no longer there. Let's see, I can select the background and yeah, if you look at the background you can see like the red splotches there. It's, it's too detailed in terms of, uh, uh, of a re a removal. We could also try just for the fun to change the calculation method, but again like this is just like any other background extraction tool you do not want to be using like points all over the nebulosity you want to kind of try to select gaps in nebulosity so splines here is doing something that looks similar to PixInsight and RBF let's try that whatever RBF stands for RBF seems to be giving a result that's very similar to uh, Krieging at least in this case. So this is like with just click, 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 get a result. And we do get rid of the gradient, but uh, we do get rid of a bit more than the gradient as well. So let me reset everything, go back uh, to, actually I'm going to go, not to the original image, and we're gonna this time select the points. And I will not be doing a flood generation anymore, I'll just be going point by point like that, just like I did uh, in PixInsight, and adding the points where I feel like there's little nebulosity. So points in here, by the way, left click is used to add, add a point, and right click can be used to remove a point like here. You can also drag and drop to move a point around. Uh, but here it is, like I think I have like points in most of the darker kind of areas. I'm gonna try again to compute, to calculate the background, first using the default method that uh, is provided by Graxpert, which is Krieging. Okay, and here is the result. This time, obviously, since we're selecting points much more with much more discernation than before, and I can actually now use kind of like the result of the stretch and of the, uh, the background extraction to kind of refine my selection, which is really nice. It's kind of like a, a dynamic approach to things where I can adjust my selection based on the, the results of the uh, the grad gradient extraction so you can be quite precise like that I feel like this is a bit uh, easier to use than the dynamic background extraction in that respect um, but you can see there's still like, a lot of gradient where I wasn't able to select um, points the gradient is there as is uh, I wonder if smoothing would affect that but it seems that Krieging seems to rely a lot on having points all across the image so Krieging might be best for like galaxies or that kind of stuff rather than extended nebula like we have here let's try the other methods from splines okay splines is again i think something quite similar to uh pix insights that we got i'm, I'm going to bring down the saturation to one come on there you go yeah this is closer to what we have in pix insights and if i have a stretch that's a bit less aggressive yeah this is much more in line but we still get like the overall um, gradient is not quite removed so RBF will be our last hope so help me uh, RBF Kenobi you're my last hope we're gonna try to compute the background see what happens and here is the result and this is actually much more convincing I feel like we've removed the gradient 
least to some extent. I might add those two points there. I might like adjust things a little bit. The image does look very noisy, but we are stretching a lot. I'm gonna add that, adapt that in a moment. For now, I can use like the result of RBF to kind of add points where I feel like I want to add points. And uh, we can calculate the background again. And this region of the sky gets imaged quite a bit. And I always see like some kind of quite a few differences to the amount of nebulosity that's uh, visible in the image. And I'm kind of feeling now that rather than uh, integration time, maybe a lot of it has to do with how people do background extraction. So here we have the, uh, the result. Let me go back to a more reasonable type of uh, stretch. Here we go. And uh, this is much more in line with what I would uh, what I would expect to save the image from that gradient. Do we have as much details as in the PixInsight uh, version? We're losing stuff here because I selected those points, those points here that I think are supposed to be read in the uh, in the first place, right? So I could try to unselect those points and recalculate to see what happens. So this is actually very interesting because it feels almost like uh, PixInsight and Graxpert can work together. You can do like a rough approximation in PixInsight first, uh, where because PixInsight does seem to be far less aggressive in terms of uh, removing deep, potentially removing details in extended nebulae, whereas Graxpert seems to have far less reservations about doing that, which I think is why it's earning such a great reputation because it does get rid of gradients. It's even complex ones like we have here. Here, the gradient is basically complete, completely gone, but it's very easy for Graxpert, as far as I can tell, to also get rid of nebulosity. But using both at once to compare seems to be a decent strategy. Okay, so let's reset the sample points. This is what I'm getting with Graxpert. Um, and then I can actually save the file as an XISF file. I'm going to save the processed file. And here we go. And open it in PixInsight. And here with the PixInsight stretch, here's how it looks like. So if we compare directly to the um, PixInsight dynamic background extraction, Let's put the PixInsight dynamic background extraction on the left and the Graxpert, at least for now to the best of my ability, to the right. We can see that the images are very similar, but it does feel still that Graxpert is losing some nebulosity here, right? So it's some more um, changes that I could do to points that I'm using in Graxpert to try and lose less nebulosity. I think I'm getting a feel about why Graxpert is so popular. If you're using only Graxpert without comparing with other tools like AB and DB and PixInsight, I feel like you're losing nebulosity, you're losing details without realizing that you're doing so. Uh, let's double check the, uh, the background that we have. And yes, I, can, I don't know if it translates well on YouTube, but I can definitely see like splotches um, that I usually don't see in the dynamic background extraction of PixInsight. Um, so very, very interesting. I'm almost wondering whether it might make sense to do dynamic background extraction in PixInsight, then go to Graxpert, and then go back to PixInsight as a compromise. But you can see like definitely the one on the, on the left, the image on the left has less saturation, seems to have lost a little bit of detail compared to the image on the right. I'm not sure, this is really kind of like the first time that I'm using Graxpert and doing a, a comparison, but I'd love to hear what you think about this. Like, let me know in the comments, what are your, what are your thoughts on this, on like this dynamic background extraction that was not able to remove, but like, a gradient at the um, at the center compared to Graxpert that was able to remove it but seems to lose saturation and maybe lose some details in the nebula and uh, and how, what has 
your experience been and will you be testing Raxpert as well? So yeah, again, go and leave a comment and while you're on your way, you should like the video or dislike it if you hated it. Uh, and you can also subscribe to the channel if you're new, in which case, welcome to the channel. And if you want to support my video making endeavor and even more, you can consider joining my Patreon, links in the description. Some of my Patreon uh, tiers have access to my videos early and ad free. And or you could also join my YouTube channel as a member um, just to support me in, uh, in my YouTube creator kind of endeavor. Uh, but yeah, I'll be really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. But with that, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.